Hello and welcome to another VS tutorial. Today we'll focus on creating a full VS composition. We'll go through the workflow and nuances that will help you achieve organic and homogeneous visuals. Now that we've gone through the basics, let's incorporate that knowledge and make a nice visual that complements your music. As always, I'm Nuno's avatar, guiding you through the power of VS while the real Nuno is busy providing you support. Let's get started. For this tutorial, we'll create a visual composition with a circular form using shaders from the factory, along with the render output material for a nice feedback effect. To facilitate our work, we are going to use a demo audio file from the factory along with its MIDI counterpart. The advantage of this is to have a real audio example along with its MIDI information split by channels, which we will use to make some of the shader materials react to the music. Let's start by opening the audio panel. Click the folder icon and under Demos, load Synthwave 2. We can start by creating two layers, one for the kick and one for the snare and clap tracks. If you wish to see the loaded MIDI file, open the audio panel and click the MIDI file at the bottom. Here you see the MIDI events for each track, each one on its respective MIDI channel. In this case, the kick is on channel 1 and the snare and clap are on channels 2 and 3 respectively. Let's start with the kick. Double-click layer 1, open the factory provider under shaders and load glowing circle. Set the trigger mode to MIDI. You'll see it immediately reacting to the kick because, by default, layers are listening to MIDI input from channel 1 and each one is modulating their alpha parameter in the matrix. Now, decrease the radius a little, change the color to red, decrease the EG1 alpha modulation to reduce some of its brightness, and give some keyboard modulation to the glow parameter. You can use Shift on your keyboard for finer control when adjusting parameters. Now, for the snare and clap, double-click layer 2, go to the factory provider under shaders, and load the particles material. This time, we want this material to always be present and to pulse with the beat. Leave the trigger parameter to none, but change the MIDI input to listen to channels 2 and 3. Decrease the counter and radius. And increase VEL X and VEL Y to make the dots form a circle. To provide some contrast against the kick, change its color to a white tone. Now stop the material by setting speed to zero. To give it movement synced with the music, let's use the LFOs to modulate speed and radius. But first we need to change the LFO rates so they sync with our music. Open the LFO panel, enable sync for both LFO 1 and 2, set LFO 1 rate to 2 bars and LFO 2 rate to 1 bar. Let's also change LFO 2 waveform to sample and hold. You can click the button or use the mouse wheel to change the values. Now modulate speed and radius with LFO1 and LFO2 respectively. You should now see movement synced with the tempo. Let's add a pulsing effect by modulating the glow parameter with EG1. Next, let's make a visual for the lead, which is on channel 8. Double-click layer 3 and choose the chords material from factory shaders. Set the trigger to MIDI and change the MIDI input channel to 8. Set elements to 0 and increase offset and spread. Now let's trigger it uh, with EG2 instead of EG1, so that we can configure its attack and release to be smoother than EG1. In the matrix, remove the EG1 alpha modulation by double-clicking the modulation value and add EG2 instead. To make the material appear and disappear more slowly, select the EG tab and increase the attack and release parameters for EG2. Then use keyboard modulation to change offset and spread, modulating them as you play higher or lower notes. Change the color to a reddish tone. Now let's spice things up with the feedback effect. Double-click layer 4, 
load the render output material and set the blend mode to add so we get a feedback effect. As you can see, the first three layers are not blending with each other because they are all using the normal blend mode. We can change them to additive modes so they combine visually, set layer 1 to soft add, layer 2 to lighten and layer 3 to add. Now we have a very intense effect. We can either reduce the render output alpha to soften it or use another shader to help control it. Since it would be nice to add some texture, let's use a shader that adds texture and dampens the intensity of the feedback effect. Double click layer 5 and load the noise material from factory shaders. Solo it for now. Decrease saturation and contrast. Set its color to a dark gray. And remove the EG1 alpha modulation. Now unsolo it and move it to layer one. We move it to the top so that the texture is applied across the entire composition. Right now, we mostly see the noise layer because it's using the normal blend mode and is covering the other layers. Change it to subtract so it removes the lighter parts, reducing the feedback while applying the noisy texture. Now you can control the texture by adjusting its alpha or its color. Since we're using subtract, keep the color white to preserve the other layer's colors. Changing it will also affect them. Next, let's add another reactive layer that responds to the base synth stabs and the pad. Double-click layer 6 and load glowing circle again, placing it on top of the quartz layer. Change its MIDI input to channel 6 and 7 and set the trigger mode to MIDI. Increase the radius. Remove the glow and modulate it with keyboard. Also use each one to modulate radius. And alpha to give it some pulse. You should now see it present because of the pads and pulsing with the bass. Change its color to light blue. The effect is very strong, so set the blend mode to exclusion to soften it and decrease its alpha. Now we can finish by adding one more layer to give the background some color and another for additional texture. To add color, double-click layer 7 and load the plain color material from factory shaders. Place it above the chords layer. Change its color to a light blue tone and set the blend mode to screen so it blends nicely with the composition. Darken the color until you get a smooth bluish background. To finish, double-click layer 8 and load the star grid material from factory shaders. Move it under the particles layer. Increase density and decrease both thickness and pattern. Change its color to light blue and set its blend mode to overlay so it affects only the highlight areas. Remove the EG1 alpha modulation so you can adjust the alpha freely. Now darken the color and reduce the alpha until you get a nice background texture. That's the end of it. You've created a polished visual with multiple layers blended to create an organic composition that reacts beautifully to your music. As you can see, by combining and blending multiple layers, you can create complex visuals. Some layers can work as textures, while others act as visual triggers for the transients in your music. VS gives you full control over your visuals. With some practice, you can easily build your own appealing and dynamic compositions. As always, I'm Nuno's Avatar, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you in the next one.